Today, we're going to explain Healing Mythic Plus at four different levels of complexity, starting with the very basics, explaining what healing is like as a beginner, and then how it should progress over time as you start pushing higher keys. In your journey, you gain experience as you develop a better understanding of what it actually means to be a healer. Because at the highest level, healing is kind of weird, and in some ways almost backwards, but more on that later. Some of the information we'll cover today comes directly from our courses at skillcap.com. Our website teaches class fundamentals, role-specific tips, advanced dungeon guides, mistakes to avoid, and much more. You can even try everything out risk-free since if you don't actively rank up while using Skillcap, then you can get your money back no questions asked. For a limited time, Skillcap members also get one free VOD review per month. Recently, Mears reviewed a 3500 Demon Hunter and gave 30 minutes of gameplay analysis. That's one of the best players of all time, breaking down gameplay and providing personalized advice. A pretty sweet deal. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rating you've always wanted. Now, let's explain what healing feels like for most beginners. Okay, so maybe something went terribly wrong in your life and you decided you want to heal Mythic Plus. We're totally kidding, of course. We love healers. Anyway, if you are a beginner, you are probably paying a lot of attention to health bars while having this feeling that they always need to be topped. I mean, that's your job, right? You do the hard work to make sure your team is always safe. And there's no safer feeling than having everyone at 100% HP. At this point, healing feels like an arcade game. You see a bar go down and you want to instantly go back up. You know that there are different categories of heals and you know how to use them. You have your maintenance heals like hots or shields, which you know to keep up all the time. And then when one person drops low, you have your spot heal, which you can use to top them quickly. If more than one person is dying, you then have an AoE heal. Right now, we're not too concerned about mana because we can just drink anyway. And you probably treat your cooldowns like power-ups. Maybe you notice someone about to die and so you reactively pop a healing cooldown to save the day. At this point, healing seems pretty straightforward. This is healing in its non-GMO organic form. But then you realize something. Wait. I need to be doing damage too. After all, we're playing Mythic Plus and we have a timer to beat. And every time you watch a healer on Twitch, they seem to be doing damage all the time. But this seems kind of weird, right? I mean, how can you even find the time to always do damage when you have health bars to top? As a beginner, the simplest way to solve this problem is to just damage whenever there isn't a health bar to top. This makes total sense and it works. If you play Disc Priest or Mistweaver Monk, you have a cheat code to skip this step automatically. But no matter what, as long as you're hitting a priority target while balancing out your heals, then you're doing a good job. And now it seems like we're progressing. We started with this basic idea that we need to be healing and now we've progressed to doing damage. As long as we have some general knowledge about trash and boss mechanics, we will feel like we're doing our job with just keeping health bars top, reactively using cooldowns, and doing our damage whenever it's convenient. So how can we do better? Let's dive into level 2, and if you were paying attention, you probably noticed we were missing something from level 1. It's our CC and interrupts. Okay, priests, we know you don't have a kick, but pay attention anyway. Mob control as a healer is more important than most people realize, and we have to go back to Economics 101 to understand why. We all have to come to terms that DPS players have, well, egos, and they can be a bit sensitive. World of Warcraft is a game about teamwork, helping your fellow key pusher achieve their goals. And for DPS, they want one thing and one thing only, to get those juicy pink parses. And if they don't, then they're going to get their feelings hurt. And we don't want that. So how does economics or being healer have to do with DPS wanting to do more damage? Well, you can think of every global cooldown as having a cost. So for a mage to give up a damage global in order to CC or interrupt, they're losing out on a global that they could use to do damage. This is what we call opportunity cost. And for DPS, this cost is higher than it is for us. Now, you might be thinking, skill capped is saying DPS should never kick. Let's be clear, DPS should be using their kicks and stops. But there are a few reasons why your interrupt is extra valuable as a healer, especially in this intermediate level. Number one, sometimes you can't even trust DPS to use their kicks in the first place. Number two, by kicking, your group can do more damage. Remember, lower opportunity cost. Number three, your CC causes everyone to take less damage, which means less healing for you. And as an added bonus, now you can do more damage safely. It's kind of a neat little way you can secretly carry in the background. And speaking of carrying, at this point you're probably doing a better job with your healing rotation and being smarter about how you distribute heals. You're probably also used to the dungeons by now, which also means you're thinking about cooldown cadence. Remember back in level 1 you were pressing your CDs very reactively, not really planning to use them for any specific reason, just as an emergency button when someone drops low. But now you have more dungeon knowledge and are starting to feel the actual strength of your abilities. And because of this, you know how to plan your cooldowns based around the scripted events of the dungeon. 
You're no longer panic pressing your CDs randomly, but instead saving them for very specific moments. Maybe you know a boss will do a ton of AoE damage, so you planned your biggest raid cooldown in advance. Or if you play a class like Resto Druid, you know when and how to properly ramp your heals in order to get those big flourishes. Or maybe you know there's a boss that does a big one shot, so you see who they're targeting and you use your external to save the day. This is what happens when you start to get better at WoW. You realize that planning for the future really pays off. The further you can plan your moves out in advance, the easier things become. All right, let's go back to the drawing board. We're still keeping health bars topped, after all, that's our job, but now we're using our cooldowns in a more logical way, saving them for when they're actually needed. Because of this, we're now more comfortable at dealing damage, especially now since we're focusing on mob control. But we're still on level two. How could we possibly do any better than this? Let's graduate to level three, and here's where things get a bit weird. Every experienced healer starts developing this strange superpower that allows them to see a little bit into the future. But instead of being able to do anything useful with this power, like winning the lottery, it gives them the ability to feel when someone is going to die. Because the more you heal, the more you can feel the weight of your HPS, and you can feel it side by side to how much damage someone will take. At this point, it sounds like we're discussing some spiritual hippie stuff, but bear with us. We don't have to tell you that World of Warcraft isn't a balanced game. Some classes are made of titanium and diamonds and could survive a nuclear event without pressing a button, but other classes, they'll die to a small breeze. As a healer, we can't change game balance, but what we can do is try and change outcomes, which will involve some proactive play. And this is the theme of level three, becoming more proactive in order to make smarter decisions. This is the exact reason why Omni CD is so powerful, since it allows you to make the best decisions for proactive gameplay. Remember back at level one, we were only using our cooldowns as emergency buttons, but then as we gained knowledge of every dungeon, we learned to prioritize them for specific moments. And now at level three, our goal is to proactively use our cooldowns on specific targets, making sure that we trade efficiently and minimize overlaps. Because of this, we need to understand that some classes need a bit more babysitting and even some players themselves need more attention. Before every dungeon starts, you should be thinking about who is most vulnerable to damage. Some classes will be squishy, and others are going to be passively tanky. Then there's even some classes who can be both, depending on the skill of the player. For instance, mages have an entire arsenal of defensive cooldowns, but if they aren't actually using them, then they're going to be no better than a level one boar in Elwyn Forest. And this is how Omni CD comes into play, because it allows you to dictate your externals and raid cooldowns in the most efficient way possible when there is no communication. You now have the information to fill in any defensive gaps, being ready to trade before the damage happens. And to take it a step further, you'll even use Omni CD to fill in the gaps of your team's kicks and interrupts. By passively monitoring who has their stops ready and who doesn't, you can even avoid overlapping mob control even when there is no voice communication. And if you do have the luxury of playing in voice, Omni CD makes you the conductor of your own orchestra. You become the inventory manager of your group's cooldown budget, which might seem like a stressful task at first, but is actually the best way to keep a calm head, because you can plan more in advance. And speaking of planning in advance, you are now more aware of your mana. This is one place that often gets overlooked by healers. If you were a druid, for instance, you have probably realized by now that Innervate is almost best used on cooldown, even when you are high on mana to begin with. If you plan to ramp your heals, then you know to use Innervate to proactively conserve mana. As a shaman, you've learned by now to plan around tidal waves, realizing that you can't just slam your heals without weaving in riptides here and there. It might not seem like a big deal, but any time you spend drinking is time you don't spend doing damage, which will slow the run down. Again, we have to think about opportunity costs. Now we've leveled up again. Instead of just playing cooldown usage, we're now dictating it by being proactive even with our mana. But since we started, we're still keeping health bars topped, and maybe we're not super confident on when exactly to do damage safely. We said level three was weird, but level four is where things become counterintuitive. There's something in World of Warcraft that we've called the Goldilocks problem, and it's everywhere. Here's how it works with healers. Some healers are too cold. They wanna sit in the back and vape with their heals alone. Damage, that's for the DPS. But then there's the timer and the realization that slacking on damage could mean a depletion. On the flip side, other healers are too hot with their damage. They want to press W with their group and pump the meters. While this can definitely be fun, it's sometimes a bit reckless and can end in disaster if people die because of it. These players sometimes try to copy what they see on Twitch because there, it seems like everyone is pumping with their group. But it's important to remember that healers like Roybin, Thaner, and Elsmere are playing with highly coordinated groups. 
Everyone is cycling interrupts and stops, pressing defensives, and actively avoiding damage. Playing with good DPS is an absolute luxury as a healer, and you can't really copy-paste playstyles from Twitch into everyday groups. While it might be tempting to play aggressive, remember that group stability is going to be more important than doing marginally more damage if your group isn't playing in a coordinated way. But you might be wondering, how do I know when it's the right time to be aggressive? Because obviously, you can't be cold and need to do more than just heal to beat the timer. To solve the Goldilocks problem, you need to rethink how and when you use healing cooldowns. There's a tendency for healers to hold onto their healing cooldowns, assuming that they will be needed for an upcoming boss, thinking that because damage isn't going to be high, then it's better to save them for later when damage will be high. But by doing so, it's possible that they are losing out on multiple chances to press their cooldowns. These dead spaces might seem minor in isolation, but over the course of an entire run, they can cost time. This is because cooldowns are more than just survivability tools, but also act as safety nets for offensive play. Watch here as Royvin presses Flourish on this trash pack, which allows her to play more aggressive with damage. She does this knowing that the cooldown is basically a throwaway anyway and won't be needed until much later. And let's go back to where we started. Remember this whole time we were concerned about keeping health bars topped? Well, here's where we can break that rule. The best healers realize that health bars don't always need to be at 100% HP. If there's not going to be any damage in the next few seconds, then you can afford to be more aggressive and only heal when it's actually needed. If there is no future damage about to happen, it's fine for someone to hover low and let your hots do the work. This is why healing is so weird in Dragonflight. The game isn't really designed around rot damage anymore like it used to be, but instead these big isolated events where someone might get one shot. But as long as you know when those events are going to happen, you have a much better time knowing how and when to balance your healing job with the other five jobs you didn't know you signed up for when you decided to become a healer. And as a reminder, we're continuing to roll out brand new courses at skillcap.com. You will learn everything you need to rank up in Mythic Plus, whether you're a true beginner or a seasoned veteran. We're also offering new members one free VOD review a month where you can get expert feedback from some of the world's best players. To celebrate this, we're offering an exclusive limited time discount through the link below. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to get the rating you've always wanted. Anyway guys, hope you found this video useful and as always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.